it gave you the opportunity to advance yourself. You didn't have to be the person with the biggest degree. You had to show an, a desire to learn and a desire to achieve. They love success. They um, talk very fondly of their um, achievements over time. My crew had 77,000 man shifts without have a lot, having a lost time accident. And they all said there has to be another ore body like that. But they haven't found one. Timmins, Ontario, a city with an extraordinary history of mining. Three of the biggest gold mines in the world have been part of its legacy over the past 100 years. But a half century ago, during the late 1950s and early 1960s, that wasn't the case. But the news was out in the community and of course the business community was worried that losing gold mines and forestry jobs at the same time as a, a double whammy on the business community. That all changed in November of 1963. A young Canadian geologist, Ken Dark, hauled a two-ton diamond drill into the Muskeg 22 kilometers north of Timmins. They pierced the Canadian shield with a single drill hole that would set off one of the greatest claim-staking rushes in North American history. It breathed new life into a depressed community. It sparked a frenzy in stock markets around the world. And in the end, Kid Creek became one of the greatest base metal mines on the planet. The discovery hole had 100 feet of solid copper. There's pictures of at least 10 feet of it. Solid copper. Over the past 50 years, the zinc, copper, silver, and other minerals of the Kidd deposit would provide employment for nearly 20,000 men and women. If you had a job at, at Kidd Creek, you had a, a good high paying position, good benefits, and, and they took care of their, their employees um, you know, through all kinds of programs. Their pension plan was, was good, their health benefits were excellent, their short term disability program was really good. I mean, if you hurt yourself, you were protected, you were waiting for you to come back to work. There was never an issue of, oh, you're number seven, now number eight takes your place. It's like you're a person that, that mattered to them. The mine itself is unlike anything in the world. It seemed as if it would never end. As development pushed deeper and deeper, company geologists would find even more economic mineralization. So uh, the, the, the evolution I've tried to explain to myself mentally and the analogy I keep coming up with is somebody at some stage um, made this decision to build a 20-story building and it's evolved from that to a 50-story and then somebody said well why don't we take the scaffolding a bit higher and we try and run a 100-story building and they said well gee that was easy let's try 120. And it's one of those places that has this reputation from the very early days when I was in mining school um, that people spoke about where it always was testing how much of this ore body it could possibly extract. I happened to be pushed the, the button that sent the flow up to the concentrate section, the filters. I was happened to just be lucky enough to be on shift that day. They, um, they love the fact that the organization has had multiple parents. They, they believe that that diversity has, has generated some of the, the strengths they have today. It was, it was welcoming, it was encouraging, it gave you the opportunity to advance yourself, you didn't have to be 
the person with the biggest degree you had to show an, a desire to learn and a desire to achieve and they would help you. Kid Creek has one of the most impressive safety records of any mine. Indeed, any industrial operation in the world. Safety is taken very seriously. Health and safety was priority and, and I think Kid Creek at the time was one of the first companies to hire a significant volume of women and put them in production roles as opposed to administrative roles. So I remember ladies working in the refinery, working in a zinc plant, working uh, in the concentrator as skilled tradespeople, electricians, millwrights, uh, you know, those type of jobs, operators um, that you would never have thought of even in the 80s, like, you know, f making full wage equal to the men. The codes were the same. There was no uh, change in the status of wages because they were female. I think the most fundamental thing that we do very well is, is assess um, all the hazards that people might be exposed to in, in the course of their, their, their jobs. We then have adequate management programs and again evolved over time. So through trial and success, trial and error, we've eventually developed a, a process which is actually robust in that we know what works and know what doesn't work and have a culture where we learn um, constantly. And we have, we've got a very, very proud safety record which has reduced that injury frequency rate or the numbers of people injured every year to a very negligible amount. And it wasn't just employees, contractors again. You worked side by side with these people, so it wasn't as if it was, uh, uh, well, he's a contractor, it doesn't count. It was, you know, he worked at Kid Creek, he worked with you. And you relied on him and he relied on you. In addition to the company's world-class safety record, Kid Operations is at the forefront of environmental stewardship. Predominantly, we, we're very aware of the environment. It's a sensitive environment. It, there's a lot of precipitation. Uh, our impact on the environment, either through air or through water, would be directly felt. Um, so we know what we know. And we have done a lot of work with the regulators and other authorities in the region to understand what our impact might be and then put adequate management plans in, like we do with safety, to ensure that we have no impact on the environment. And we then monitor those programs very, very diligently because we believe no, no tolerance or no exceedance is acceptable. In 1973, a few short years after the metallurgical complex began operations, the company took an unusual environmental step. They set aside 300 acres and adopted a small herd of six buffalo. In this 1980s company film, employee Ray Donnie talks about his role in taking care of the herd. Hi, my name is Ray Donnie, an environmental technician with Falconbridge. In these parts, I'm known as Buffalo Ray. One of my duties with Falconbridge is to check the animals on a daily basis, and from September until May, they must be fed hay. These large bales of hay weigh approximately 500 kilograms, and the animals consume approximately two bales every day. In addition to an impeccable safety record, a commitment to the environment, and incredible job opportunities. The company has invested millions of dollars over the years into the community for nonprofit groups and other organizations. Over and above, we've also contributed quite significantly to a number of corporate social investment projects in, in, the, in the community, both hospital, some of the community, non-for-profits and, and other organizations in the community. KID Operations continues to provide base metals such as copper and zinc that improve the day-to-day -day lives of people around the world, including renewable energy projects, solar panels, electric vehicles, wind energy, energy-saving appliances, and much more. When the closing chapters are eventually written, those who study and follow in the footsteps of this magnificent mine will be challenged to meet the achievements and higher standards in safety, engineering, production, and environmental stewardship established by the nearly 20,000 men and women who have been the heart and soul of KID operations for more than five decades. 
Uh, I think what, what's, what's fascinated me since I got there was this um, pride that the organization has. So no matter who you speak to, people relate to how many years they've worked there, 30 years and 35 years, and they've been through this mine's con conversion to another mine. They're absolutely fascinated with um, uh, change, uh, not resistant to that change. They love success. They um, talk very fondly of their um, achievements over time. Uh, I, I, I may be sounding as if I'm patting myself on the back, but my, my crew had 77,000 man shifts, and those were 12-hour shifts without have a lot, having a lost time accident. We've had people from Russia, South Africa, Australia, every mining country in the world that send people here. And they all said there has to be another ore body like that. But they haven't found one. They haven't found one in their country. We haven't found one in our country. It is a unique ore body.